Hi everybody, this is Cheryl Richardson and um, I'm here to talk to you about my new book, Waking Up in Winter, In Search of What Really Matters at Midlife. It'll be um, released in December of this year, December 19th. And uh, this past weekend, I shared an excerpt from the book in my newsletter. It's a newsletter I put out every week. You can subscribe at CherylRichardson.com. And um, I've received some lovely feedback. Thank you so much for those of you who posted on uh, Facebook. It's there as well. The excerpt is there. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the birth of this book, where it came from, read a couple of passages to you as well, and then let you know about a flash ebook sale that's rolling out today. My publisher is doing that in order to um, support pre-orders. So I want to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, so before I do that, let me just say hi to folks. Hi, Claire and Alicia and Lori from Arizona and um, Deborah. Hi, welcome. Carmen, Chris, uh, Christina, yeah, Christina and Jasmine. Um, thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. So waking up in winter is, um, yeah, thanks, Debbie. <laughs> thank you very much. Waking up in winter is a different kind of book for me. It's a scary book. Uh, it's not scary to you, scary to me. <laughs> it's a journal. So in some ways, it's it's this cross between a self-help book and a memoir in journal form. And uh, it came about after trying to decide. For quite some time, I was trying to decide what my next book was going to be about. And, you know, I consider myself an artist, and I love the craft of writing. It's really important to me. And... I really um, struggled with what I was going to write about next. You know, my heart has to really be in it. My my soul has to really be in it. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to be a good experience for me. And I really want to lose myself in the creative process. And it was my husband, Michael, who recommended that I think about publishing a journal. He knew that I loved the writer Mae Sarton. I've mentioned her before sometimes on Facebook Lives. Some of you may know her. A lot of people don't. May Sarton uh, was a writer of fiction, nonfiction, journals, uh, poetry. And in, I think it was 84, I came, I came across the first journal she ever wrote called Journal of a Solitude. Uh, I was at, a, at a, um, a book sale at a church and I was combing through the piles and piles of books and I saw this Journal of a Solitude and the subtitle read something like, um, the intimate journal of a year in the life of a creative woman. And I picked it up and I started to thumb through it. And what I noticed immediately were a few things. She was a beautiful writer. I was really impressed with her writing as much as I could be at that time. I was so young as a writer. Um, she was somebody who traveled and spoke about her writing to people. And I knew somewhere inside me that that was something I wanted to do at some point. I didn't quite know anything more than that. Just that there was this inkling that I would want to be teaching or speaking about the world and my writing, my craft. Um, she also loved nature and she loved animals. There were several entries about several ways that she would just capture the beauty of nature in her writing and I could tell that she just deeply loved her animals. Cats, she had cats, dogs, and um, and I just fell in love with her. And I read that book, I underlined it, I've read it several times, it's a small paperback book. And um, she would go on to write a series of journals throughout her life, uh, all the way up until 83. Her last journal was called At 83 and she died that year. And um, and I just loved reading them. To me, her journals read like, I felt like I was reading a novel and I couldn't wait to see what happened next in her life. And it wasn't that she lived this extraordinary outer life. She lived a more extraordinary inner life. And I found that really compelling. And so I, um, when I was trying to figure out what I was going to write next, and I knew something was up. I just wasn't feeling as passionate about another formal self-help book. And one night at dinner, my husband, Michael, said to me, why don't you just publish a journal? You love May Sarton. You've been writing in a journal since you were 12 years old. Why don't you just consider doing something like that? And I remember, I remember where we were, the restaurant we were at, and I remember my first reaction was, oh, wow, that would be kind of awesome. 
So I had this excitement, and I think that that's important. You know, when there's something our soul wants to do, we get this message through this, this feeling of excitement. You know, that, that kind of like, yes, there's like this little tiny yes inside. And then immediately, you know, the critical voices came in. Who would want to read your journal? What do you have to say to people? And, you know, are you crazy to share something so private and intimate? What would your family think? Like all of that sort of stuff came rushing in. And I kind of wrote it off, except when the soul grabs a hold of something and truth is spoken, it doesn't let go. Thank God for all of us. So um, I, I just noticed, I kept having this sense of, eh, maybe this isn't such a bad thing. Maybe this is a good idea and I need to really explore it. So I did. I continued to explore it. And I made a decision um, to go back and uh, I made a decision to, to publish a journal. Actually, what I decided was I would keep this journal. I would consider the idea of publishing it. I wanted it to be a true journal. I didn't want it to be sort of secretly written for you. I wanted it to be what my journaling was like. Um, and then I would see how I felt about it. Like I would just see where the journal would go to, how it would unfold. And, um, and then I would decide from there whether or not I wanted to publish it. So I wanted to just read to you a little part in the introduction of the book where, um, where I decide that this book is born in that way and, um, or that, you know, I think it's going to be born. And so I, um, I just want to read you this little part in the introduction about uh, what that introduces sort of what happened. It says, so, um, so it was that I decided to follow May Sarton's lead. Inspired in a way I hadn't been in a long time, I went to work, and my renewed appetite for writing told me I was on the right track. That's how we know when we're following the soul and we're on the right track, when we feel energy and excitement and enthusiasm. We should pay attention to that and keep moving in that direction. You will probably feel fear as well. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, if it's mixed with the excitement and the enthusiasm, you want to keep going. I've always said that's a good indication that you're headed in the right track. One of the great advantages of keeping a journal is that it provides a way to reflect on our lives. After doing this for more than 40 years, I'm still surprised by how a messy, nonlinear process can provide such clarity and perspective. While at the time I had no idea where this particular journal would lead, it's clear to me now that these pages tell the story of what happened when I made the decision to move on from writing self-help and in doing so discovered that there was something much bigger going on. A new awareness of my mortality had set in and it caused me to begin questioning everything, reevaluating everything really, my work, my marriage, my friendships, and my priorities in that light. Years of success left me feeling grateful and blessed, but as I entered my 50s, I started to feel something else, anxious and unsettled. Was I really happy? Did I still feel stimulated and satisfied with my work? Now that the finish line of life was creeping closer, was I really living or just going through the motions? These are some of the things that I was asking myself. They were questions I actually couldn't get away from. This is the existential world I entered as I began this journal in the middle of a busy speaking schedule. While my aim was to chronicle my experiences in present time, I've chosen to include some background information now and then to provide helpful context. This book is an honest account of what happened when I started listening to my life. Now I want to just say something about that. I knew when I went back after writing the journal and I went back and read it, and I had the sense that, yeah, I think I'm going to publish this. I'm going to show people what it means to live a conscious, examined life where you use the experiences in your life as a catalyst for growth and healing. And it was clear to me that there were certain tools that I talked about, resources, strategies that I used that would be of interest to my readers as well. So every now and then I would go back and provide context. For example, I write a bit about the Enneagram, which is a a, a kind of like a soul typing system that I found incredibly life-changing. And so I didn't want to just talk about the Enneagram and my experiences without also giving some context so that you would know where to find it and um, how to take the test and discover for yourself some of the things I discovered myself. So 
Um, in the back of this book, like in all of my books, there's a list of resources that um, that provide you with the information you need. And sometimes in the journal itself, there's some context so that you'll be able to use it to your advantage. In that way, it has like kind of a self-help element to it without it reading that way. So um, this book is an honest account of what happened when I started listening to my life. At some point, we're all invited to take the hero's journey, to leave familiar territory, face our demons, travel through darkness and find our way to a better life, one more aligned with who we've become. In this book, I invite you to take this journey with me. Whether you're questioning your own mortality, dealing with a life crisis, hungry to feel more alive, or just plain tired of going through the motions because you know deep in your heart you're meant for something more, it's my hope that the challenges, lessons, and desires I explore here will strike a resonant chord within you. While the hero's journey is a solitary adventure, and it is, um, it's comforting to know that uh, we're not alone. So with a nod of gratitude to my muse, May Sarton, I set this journal in motion with the same words she used to start her own some four decades ago. She wrote, begin here. And so the journal covers a period in my life. When I look back now, I see a period that was really deeply influenced by the death of my good friend, Debbie Ford, who was a soul sister and a, um, a colleague, like a, a partner. You know, we shared our lives, our work lives, especially in such a profound way that when she died, it was like, a piece of me went with her and a piece of me that the bigger part of me that was left over had to really question, given my conversations with her, question um, how I was living my life. And, um, and so that certainly was a catalyst. And then also, as I said in the excerpt that I shared over the, uh, in the newsletter today and last night, turning 50, also there was something about 50 that just it was a real gift. You know, a lot of people are afraid of aging. A lot of people are afraid of the passage of time. And I certainly understand that we all want to stay here forever for the most part, right? There are some days I'm like, eh, not so much. Um, but what I've discovered is that when we look death in the eye, when we look at the reality that our time here is limited and precious, we begin to experience life not only in a deeper and richer and more meaningful way, but we start to discover what really matters so that we become more consumed with living our lives than the fear of death. And when you're more consumed with living, death isn't so scary anymore. So um, I thought I would read to you, there's one more, um, no, not one more, but there's, I thought I would read to you a section in the book, just a short little um, Entry. So it's you know it's a journal that starts at starts at the beginning of uh, the end of September and goes all the way through March of the following year. But this will just give you sort of a flavor of the entries and also um, also it speaks to a little part a little piece about um, what I discovered. One of the things I discovered during this time that was really important was that being in nature and beauty um, wasn't just a fun thing for me to do or a nice thing to do. They were absolutely um, vital to my well-being and my soul. I keep going back and forth. You know, I, my, my eyes aren't bad enough that I, I can sometimes read the pages and sometimes I can. It's actually better without them. Okay, so this journal entry is from October 21st. And it says, like the lilacs and peonies that pay an oh-so-brief visit in spring, the autumn colors are changing too quickly this year. The weather has been so dry that the leaves are turning faster than usual. The sugar maples in the front yard have gone from yellow to orange to red in just a few days. A few days. I want to yell, stop, wait, not yet. My psyche needs time to make the transition. I think of that now. It's, you know, we're going into autumn here now and I'm going through that mourning process again. The more I value that which tugs at my heart, nature, and the beauty of the changing seasons, things that feed a growing hunger, the more crucial they become. Autumn is a time of surrender, a slow release into the reality of death, but I don't want to surrender sooner than I must. 
the fading light, the cool breeze that brings a chilling hint of winter, and the geese flying overhead at the start of their migration force me to face the fact once again that everything ends. Endings. It's the theme this year. I seem to be entering a stage of life where I feel compelled to stop for a while and reflect. I need a long, deep breath. Space to digest my life thus far. I want to search my history for wisdom and for those things I value most so I can keep them front and center. I know that's why I feel so drawn to nature, the place that hosts my curiosity. As a kid, I spent hours sitting under trees, staring at clouds or at birds in flight. I get lost in the woods looking for insects and wildflowers and snakes. I loved snakes when I was a kid. I would hold them and talk to them. I loved them. The outside world was a magical place full of life, always presenting something new to marvel at. Baby birds in a nest, the forsythias planted by my grandfather, their yellow arms reaching this way and that, or the green shoots that materialized out of nowhere in just a few days after planting a garden. The outdoors was my home away from home, a place to find myself free from the noise of a big family. Today, nature rescues me from a different kind of noise, the busyness of my life. The worry, that accompanies am uh, the worry that accompanies ambition, the endless thoughts about all that must be done. As I walk along the reservoir, hike through the state park near our home, ride waves in the heat of the summer, or simply stare out at the fields in our backyard, I feel transported, reconnected to something ancient and true. I can count on the trees and the wind and the water to remind me of what matters most to my soul. Yes, that little girl was on to something, and I'm ready to come home again. And I did. That was that was that's been an important theme in the book, coming home to my home, myself. That's what the hero's journey does, you know. And I think for a lot of us, um, we embark on a hero's journey when we reach midlife. We're sort of forced into that journey, hopefully, unless you drink a lot or do drugs or lose yourself in food, you know, um, numb yourself in some way. And, and I understand <laughs> there's, there's been times I've done that myself because the hero's journey is a solitary journey and it's scary on one hand. Um, but if we welcome it in, if we open our arms and see it as an opportunity to get to know ourselves more deeply and to get to, to really evaluate and reevaluate our lives and determine what really matters and what doesn't really matter, then um, the hero's journey takes us to the next stage of our own development. It's a really powerful time in our lives. And many of us, we can go through it, you know, I've had people read the book who are a lot younger than I am, um, but we're dealing with the health crisis or the loss of a loved one early in their lives and things like that. You know, these kinds of wake up calls can also be a catalyst for the hero's journey. And what I'm hoping is that this book kind of lights the way and makes it a little less scary and also shines a light on the, um, the opportunities we all have to make the journey meaningful to use it to um, do things like create deeper, more fulfilling relationships, find work that we love, or invest more deeply in the work we're already doing, express our own art. I write a lot about the importance of creative expression as a path to connect with our soul and our joy, um, the importance of desire. You know, what is, what is desire and how awake are we to our own desire? Um, and I'm talking about a deep, soulful sort of desire, not just a, a superficial, you know, cake and cookie kind of desire. Um, so anyway, I'm going to, over the next few months, as we prepare for the launch of the book, it'll be on December 19th, just in time for the holidays. Um, as we prepare for that, um, I'm going to be sharing more excerpts and I'll do more Facebook lives like this where I'll read from the book and talk about it as well. Um, today, my publisher Harper One in San Francisco is rolling out a flash sale for the ebook. They're doing this as a way to um, to really launch the pre-sales of the book. That's what publishers do. They they want to launch pre-sales. Pre-sales, and what that does is it shows the bookstores and it shows the online bookstores that there's an interest in this book and that they should order the book. That's why pre-sales pre-sales are so important to authors and to publishers. 
And I'd love to get the book into as many hands as I can. I trust it'll get into the right hands, the hands it's supposed to. So there's a flash sale that's rolling out today. It's for, uh, it'll, it'll roll out this afternoon, this evening. Um, you see the link here in my Facebook post and I'll make sure I will, um, I'll check the post when I'm done here as well. I'll edit it to make sure that you can go right to the page that will show you where you can order the hardcover or you can, um, you can order the take advantage of the flash sale. Uh, it's going to roll out this evening. It, happen, it it will stay in place until tomorrow at six o'clock. So as soon as it's no longer available, available, it'll be taken off that page. But you'll be able to see where you can get the hardcover. The other thing I want to say to you is, um, you know, I've built my writing career on uh, producing books that groups of people have used. Life makeover groups. People have like book groups, have read the book together and have done the work in the book together. And so I know that there's a lot of people who read my books and book groups. So one of the things that I'm going to do is, um, I just want to let you know early, is I'm going to do this really great fun contest where if you want to buy multiple copies of the book in either ebook, I don't know, like would you buy an ebook as a gift for people? I suppose you could. Um, so if you want to buy, <laughs> if you want to buy eBooks as gifts for people, then you want to do it now because it's $4.99 for the eBook. So that's a really great price. Um, but if you do that, and if you do that, even in hardcover, if you pre-order, do me a favor and just keep a copy of your receipt because um, at some point we're going to ask for those copies to be sent in to a specific email address, and I'm going to put them all in a pile and choose um, a handful of people that uh, I, I can do a uh, private Facebook group, Facebook book group for you and your friends um, as part of your gift. I would love to do that. It would be really fun. It's a great way to use technology and um, we can just, you can just set up a Facebook uh, group, private group for you and the people who are going to be reading the book and then we can plan a date and I can come and visit. Um, at the end of this book, there's a series of very, uh, provocative questions about the hero's journey and the midlife process. Um, they're important questions for you to ask yourself or to journal about. They're also really interesting questions to be uh, pondered in a group. And um, so I, uh, that may be something that you want to do. So just keep that in mind. If you happen to get multiple copies of the ebook, um, please keep uh, Keep track of your receipt. I would say that if you purchase five or more copies, you'll get entered into the um, contest for the uh, for the Facebook group meetings, and I'll do I'll do several of them. So you'll have lots of chances for that. I'm not just going to do one or two. Um, all right. Well, there you have it. That's the beginning. It's the beginning of this launch. I have to say, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> it's a very personal book. My family hasn't read it, except my sister Michelle, who read it very early on and um, read it like in a day or two and called me. And honestly, I remember the day that she called and told me that she finished it and how much it spoke to her and that she really loved it. I remember thinking, well, even if I never published this book, it was really, it felt so healing to be seen and, um, to be seen and, um, I don't know what the word is, respected, just appreciated by a sibling with such a vulnerable book. It meant a lot. It gave. It actually gave me the courage to continue. Shelly, I don't know if you're here, but um, you probably don't know that. <laughs> um, so anyway, thank you all for being here, and um, I appreciate um, your support of my work. I really do. And I hope that this book speaks to you. I know that it's really going to speak to a lot of you. And, you know, in some ways, what I hope is that this launches a series of journals for me in my life that I can continue to write until up until the last year that I'm here as well. So anyway, um, I look forward to next week. We'll be talking again. And um, thank you very much for all your comments. I'm going to go back and read them. I always do. And I will go back and check the link. I'm hoping I did it right so that you'll be able to find it right here on Facebook. All right. Thank you, everybody. I think that's, I think I covered it all. Check out the flash sale. All right. Mwah. Lots of love.